Hello everybody. Well, it is late here, my time, but I just uh, had to listen to this one and I'm going to play a little bit of it. I don't know how to get the video yet in my little picture down in the corner, so it's, you're not going to see no video, you're just going to see me, but I want you to listen to this now. And I knew the rats would be found out and they would be coming up above ground in the next year in congress all right john solomon thank you for those reports we appreciate it just the news.com now we are only let's go back to the beginning it's the primary source for christopher Steele's dirty russian disinformation dossier that hillary clinton paid for and is now on trial for lying to the fbi in other words the bureau was so desperate to get trump that they paid a Russian agent to spew anti-Trump lies for three years. They also knew directly from him in early of 2017 that the dossier was completely false, but people like Jim Comey continue to sign off on the FISA warrants, even though they knew without the lying dossier it would never have been approved. Where is the uh, raid of Comey's home? Where is equal justice in America? It seems to be dead for the moment. Now, the second explosive report, again from John Solomon, involves January the 6th. One former intel analyst for the Capitol Police is now blowing the whistle, telling Solomon that clear and direct warnings about the dire security situation at the Capitol way prior to January 6th were totally, completely ignored by those in charge, and that would be including, ultimately, Nancy Pelosi. Here with all these explosive details, he's the editor-in-chief at JustTheNews.com. John Solomon, John, I'll let you start wherever you want. Two big stories tonight. Yeah, listen, you hit the Danchenko thing right on the head. Let's just think about this. The primary source for the Christopher Steele dossier, which was funded by the Hillary Clinton campaign, uh, is a person that the FBI believes starting in 2008 was tied to Russian intelligence. Why did they believe that? Because they had evidence he was soliciting Obama administration appointees, saying he would pay them if they would leak him classified information. He was working with the Russian intelligence agencies. He leaves the country, he comes back, they find out that he's the primary source for Christopher Steele. The FBI fires Christopher Steele because he was leaking to the media. They then hire this guy to be a confidential human source. They hire him after they detect in their first interview with him in many years, in January 17, that he lied to them, that he denied being tied to Russian intelligence. They had to say, listen, buddy, we know you're tied to Russian intelligence. He corrects himself then. They then go and put this man on the payroll for three years trying to dig up dirt on Donald Trump. It's an extraordinary thing. And now we know that while he was doing all that work for the FBI, getting paid by American tax dollars, he was lying to the FBI, not once, not twice. Five times in the indictment, and John Durham says he's going to reveal many more lies that Igor Danchenko told the FBI during this time. Uh, the, the FBI's case against for Russia collusion couldn't be any more embarrassing than what we now know. Hey, hey John, uh, I remember it was Andrew yeah. McCabe that had said, no, if you don't have the dirty dossier, and again, he was the primary yeah. source, he told them in early 2017 that means two FISA warrants were signed after, and McCabe said without that right. dossier, there would be no FISA warrant granted. That's why the Justice Department withdrew two of those FISA warrants. There is no basis for them to stand under the law. And now we know most of the uh, confidential informant information the FBI was getting about Donald Trump was completely manufactured, including that famous B tape. You know the, old, the whole story about the Moscow uh, Hotel. John Durham reveals in tonight's filing He's going to reveal that the Moscow and hotel employees who were allegedly quoted in the Steele dossier, they said they never told anyone. They didn't know anything about Donald Trump, terrible things that went on there. It's not true. Every part of the Steele dossier and Igor Danchenko's lies are going to get exposed at next month's trial. Okay, now let's go on to the other breaking news story tonight. And this gets very alarming. That as early as, uh, I think, December 21st or 23rd, I forget the exact date, I read your article, uh, that in fact multiple warnings intelligence was saying that there were groups radical groups out there planning to riot on January the 6th and they were ignored completely yeah absolutely so FBI Homeland Security US Marshal Service and the Metropolitan Police Department all provided the Capitol Police with extensive detailed information they were intercepting through their sources of people planning to go to the January 6th rally and cause tr trouble 
attack members of Congress, storm the Capitol. That's an exact word from the intelligence reports. All of that is gathered up by the intelligence division of the Capitol Police and it's disseminated to the leadership and other people, and then nothing happens. In fact, the final plans for January 6th, all these documents are on Just the News now, you can go see them, actually says there was no threat analysis, no known threat analysis, a complete lie. But here's the most important thing. A whistleblower has stepped forward. His name is Eric Corey. He's a decorated Army uh, military veteran. He is an intelligence analyst. He was the, one of the best that the Capitol Police have. He now works for the Homeland Security Department. He's so trusted. He says that he wrote a memo. Actually, we have the memo. On January 9th, three days after the, the terrible riots occurred, he wrote a memo to all his bosses saying, listen, there's no way to sugarcoat this. We knew in advance of all of this intelligence, and we didn't act on it. We failed. We've got to learn from it. We can't cover it up. Uh, there's no way to, to spin this other than we had an opportunity to stop. And he talks about how nauseous he was, knowing that his fellow officers went out there on January 6th completely blind to the intelligence he provided his bosses. This is a devastating whistleblower I have confirmed. He is working with Capitol Hill Republicans, House Republicans, working on the House Administration Committee, Rep. Rodney Davis. They've interviewed him and several other whistleblowers. If Republicans get control of Congress next year, an entirely different story about Nancy Pelosi's preparations for January 6th is going to burst onto the scene tonight. People get to see the first part of it, the actual whistleblower's memos to his bosses three days after January 6th and all the intelligence he provided going back to December 21st, 2020. And we expect that the Capitol Police chief, uh, who had requested the guard, he's coming out with a book and that's supposed to be equally as explosive? I've heard those reports. I haven't been able to confirm it, but I have I've heard that he's been writing on a book or some sort of uh, a long expose on what he knows. Uh, but the documents that are out tonight are going to irrefutably show, one, Capitol Police had plenty of warnings, specific, detailed, extensive, nonstop warnings. And when they alerted, when they got their police department ready for January 6th, they left all that intelligence out. I, I encourage everybody to go take a look at the riot uh, unit document, the document they gave the riot control units, it says there was no threat analysis at all. That is simply not true from the documents we made public tonight. Eric Hoare, remember that name. He's going to be a very important witness in the next year in Congress. All right, John Solomon, thank you for those reports. We appreciate it. Just the new Well, <clears throat> I always said there was a lot of rats under the table. Whether Trump was innocent or guilty, but I knew there had to be something because as much as he loves uh, our country, you know, why would he put up with something like that? And I said that he was probably in shock. He had no idea that they were going to do that. I mean, I'd be in shock too. I mean, good gravy, but... I don't know, but I wanted to play that for you. Yeah, it was uh, actually, in a way, not surprising to me because I've always said the rats, you know, they'll come out. They'll be found out. It won't take long. And Pelosi, that don't surprise me. Does it you? Well, everybody, I'm tired. I'm going to go to bed. I'll see you all tomorrow. God bless you. Night-night. News.com. Now we 